While it's useful to know what a model will predict given a set of inputs, it's even more useful to know how to change the inputs to get you to the outcome you want. Outcome optimization and other what-if accelerators in DataIQ help you do exactly that. Let's say we're the record label for a popular recording artist looking to develop our next hit single to top the charts. The Million Song dataset contains audio features and metadata for, you guessed it, a million popular contemporary music tracks. We've cleaned and prepared a subset, and now have a dataset containing dozens of features, which we'll use to train a regression model to predict this composite hotness score, which we'll use as the measure of the song's success. Let's explore the results of our selected model and do some what-if analysis. We can interactively adjust these inputs to reflect the style and characteristics of a particular artist, or play around with different song configurations to observe the change in the predicted hotness score. Notice how increasing artist familiarity and artist hotness increases the likelihood of a song's hotness. Along with adjusting the song itself, we might also consider giving this song to another singer in our label to increase the chances for a hit single. Now, we're up at a score of 50 as a baseline, but there are an impossible number of combinations to test one at a time. How can we prescribe what the best combinations of song characteristics are that would maximize the song's hotness? Let's use the Optimize Outcome tool to help us. We want to optimize our reference inputs for the maximal prediction, that is, the largest value for hotness we can achieve, given some constraints. Many of these audio features are actionable, things we can change and influence, so we'll enable them in our simulations. But not all features are things we can or want to change, so we'll freeze them. Let's first apply some constraints. For example, we really don't want to produce a song that takes too long to fade in, has a really slow tempo, or is longer than five minutes. It'll never get played on the radio. Let's run these simulations and review the results. The black line on the parallel coordinates plot represents our original reference input values, and the blue lines represent other possible combinations of input values that maximize the predicted hotness score. For example, if we choose this sample record, it has a very high plausibility score of 95%, meaning that its values are very close to those found in the training set, and therefore, may be reasonable values to attain. This particular example suggests that by incorporating more scales in a minor mode, increasing the fade-out length, loudness, and tempo, and just slightly lowering the key signature, we could achieve a hotness score of 65, which is way up from our initial score of 50. Other simulated records suggest other paths to a similar outcome, with varying levels of plausibility. Combine your business and domain expertise with these options to determine the best and most feasible path for your use case. By the way, a comparable what-if accelerator exists for classification models too. If, instead of a regression to predict the song's hotness value itself, the scores were broken into three tiers, unsuccessful, successful, and billboard level, our model could instead have predicted which success tier a song would achieve. In this case, when using the what-if analysis, we see this song is predicted to be unsuccessful. Let's check out the Explore Neighborhood tool to see how we could improve the song before releasing it. Because this is a multi-class classification problem, we have a couple options. We can see what changes could be made to push the prediction into any other class except unsuccessful. We call these counterfactual explanations or we can even choose a specific class we want to target, also known as actionable recourse. In our case, what adjustments would it take to move this song not just into the successful category, but specifically to make it a billboard hit? For now, we'll just choose counterfactuals. As before, we can activate or freeze features and set constraints. Now, we see a number of generated samples whose prediction is any class other than unsuccessful. Notice there weren't any highly plausible changes to this song that yielded a high probability of a billboard hit. So if a Grammy is what we're after, looks like it's back to the drawing board.
Try out outcome optimization and other what-if analysis accelerators on your own projects and go from predictive to prescriptive.